Hey, everybody. This is a great time for my partner to just jump in immediately as I'm going live. Yehuda Sunshine over here from Cyfluencer. Yo, Moab, definitely completely and totally prepared. Ian Murphy, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. My Woo! So nice to meet yeah. you. <laughs> uh, we were just getting through the intro banter, you know, religion, politics, then getting through weather and sports. So anyway, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. As somebody who follows your content, it's really good to, to have you here to be able to kind of pick your brain. And for our audience, I just want everybody to know, you know, for all of the, the mindless sales pitches and really uninteresting kind of overdone approaches to, to cyber marketing, Ian Murphy really has a, an approach and a, a way of thinking that gets people engaged and forces people to, to want to share. So I think that this conversation is something that I'm really excited about because it's something that, you know, even if I wasn't in cyber marketing, I would, I would follow your videos and, and check it out. And I'm, I'm really excited for, for our audience to be able to kind of learn something and hopefully get it together. You know, no offense to everybody else. Um, <clears throat> so on that note, Ian, do you want to maybe tell us a little bit about yourself, your your journey, how you became the Murph? <laughs> well, <laughs> I've, I've just realized I'm pointing over there. My my washing machine's on in the background. So if you hear any noises, it's not your speakers or, or anything like that. It's I'm just proving that I am a I'm a totally I'm totally with it, man. I do washing, I do stuff like that. I'm a I'm a pre proper 21st century bloke that not the <laughs> Not the misogynist most people think I am. Um, your, your assistant, your your female assistant, did it when you double clapped or when you rung the bell? I'm just trying to figure it out. Oh, I'm still, I'm still <laughs> <right>. <laughs> um, so, so my journey, I, I I do this job for two reasons. Uh, one, I didn't make it as a professional footballer, and the other reason is I once lost a million pound live on TV in the UK. Either of those things would have happened. You wouldn't. You wouldn't see me. I'd be on a yacht in Barbados or something. Four hundred k. Would that be enough to dismiss you? Oh, <laughs> but but no, nobody wants. Nobody nobody dreams of a kid of going into cyber. Right? They might do now because they think. Yeah. It's but no. When I was a kid, nobody dreamt of that. We wanted to be fireman or astronauts or stuff. Cool stuff. Cyber's not cool. People don't want to go into cyber. Everybody falls into it, you know. So, so I kind of fell into it because um, because I just wasn't good enough for football. So, so I ended up having a thirty-year career in something that didn't exist when I went to school. To be quite honest, <laughs> totally fortuitous. Um, and 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 I think my journey has gone from being a mechanic when I left school. I was a mechanic. Uh, then I worked in dockyards in the UK with in submarines and all that type of good, cool stuff. And That's then cool. into cyber in the early 90s. But how did you get from dark yards to cyber, though? Because that uh, feels like a bit oh, of a... He, he missed that point, you're saying? You're saying that Ian just dropped us off at like... the yards and then didn't explain why I think he's cool? Okay, I hear that. <laughs> um, I, so, so, the, so the top yard bit was with the Ministry of Defence in the UK, and the Ministry of Defence led to mm. the cyber stuff. And then cool. the cyber stuff led to working in Vendorland, uh, spending a year drunk in the dot com bubble, um, wasting investors' money, uh, and then yeah. and then working for myself for the past sixteen years, seventeen years, because I realised that I'm probably unemployable by most people. <laughs> HR departments and you. Just oh, they don't. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Stories about the times I've been dragged into HR departments, but but no, it's it's uh, it, it only paints me in a bad light. I'm afraid. <laughs> I can hear that. I've seen what you put out there, so I can't even imagine what would happen if they try and give you a filter. Probably a hard stop. Probably a hard stop. <laughs> oh, I, I'm, I'm so uh, part of my problem, uh, and maybe what, where the cyber off stuff comes from, but part of my problem is I'm a working class lad from Liverpool who's never quite grown up. So I've never quite become mature enough to have sensible conversations. So if somebody gets on my nerves in my profession, I tend to tell them what I think about them. Which is slightly mm. and very career, career limiting. So, and I, I tend tend not to play the corporate game too well, you know. So, if somebody's an ass, I kind of tell them they're an ass, and and it's almost why I called my company Cyber Off because I'm fed up of offending. I don't want, I don't mean to offend people, 
But cyber off, in my mind, is like a li little insult to people. So if they're talking nonsense about security, I'll just blurt out cyber, cyber off. off. Exactly. <laughs> and they'll say to me, pardon? And I, I'll just say to them, oh, I, I thought you just asked me what the name of my company was. It's a little sneaky way of just just insulting them and getting out of there really quickly. You know? I was thinking about that because I was thinking about the kind of vendors that, that you would work with and the kind of companies that would be able to appreciate that the way that, that you you go into this angle isn't too serious. You need to get a social reference. You need to get people in a way where they want to connect, where they want to be able to share, where they think it's interesting, where it's not overly technical. So I think that I would, I would love to, to hear as this conversation kind of develops, how you understand the client and where they're developing in their marketing strategy and how they understand what's really going to connect versus really being caught up in this old established way of thinking that isn't getting engagement, isn't getting leads, isn't getting people to, to go to your content because it's just not interesting. It's the, the same doldrum way to, to kind of go about it. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think for, for me, marketing is only one small aspect really of, of what I do. I, I'll do it because it brings money through the door and that my real goal is to is to build a, a no bullshit cyber community where people aren't talking in three letter acronyms or not talking about zero trust or mfa or and people don't want to hear that stuff because the normal person doesn't care enough about cyber security to want to understand that what they care about is can they can they trust a link that somebody sent them are they being scammed and they want to know that in, in, in a kind of easy to digest way. And that's where the videos come in. So a lot of the greatest fun I get from the videos is when somebody will say to me afterwards, or oh, my, my, my wife or my nan or my dad or my brother has just downloaded a password manager because of that video you did. Or I no, no, longer, no, no, no longer now just log into Wi-Fi willy-nilly. I always check that it's and this, that, and the other. So... Just picking up those little tips from the video me, makes it all worthwhile. Now, yeah. you can't pay the mortgage with all worthwhile, right? I cannot mm -hmm. pay bills with that. I've tried. I can't pay mm -hmm. bills with exposure. I can't pay bills with likes. I can't pay I, bills with... Have you tried hard, though? Because maybe you're just not trying hard enough and you could tell, like, the electricity company, I feel that I'm doing enough. Because yeah. when, I, when, I, when people ask me for money, sometimes I say, I feel like I'm doing a lot. I'm really sorry I'm dead broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe I'm not getting up early enough. Maybe my mom... Mm. I'm going to say that. Isn't, maybe getting up at like 12 in the, in the afternoon isn't the right thing to do. And then, you know, maybe just... How are you going to nurse your hangover? Like, that's the thing. If you wake up too early, you're still going to be drunk. Exactly. Or... Yeah. or an easy way to, and I've found a, a foolproof way to stay clear of hangovers. Just stay drunk. If you stay drunk, you're golden. Have, have you ever followed? Have you ever followed as, as somebody who lives in the UK? Have you ever followed Winston Churchill's daily drinking schedule? You're like, I don't know if I can handle that many watered down whiskeys, but like the the consistency of it, you got to give it to him. And if you, there's a great quote about when he went to Yalta. And he's like, this place is so bugged. They're like, what are you going to do to get through it? And he's like, I brought enough whiskey. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, my liver couldn't stand that. I've only just got no. into whiskey, by the way, but my liver couldn't stand that, I don't think. You just got into yeah. whiskey? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Late, late, later on in life, it's, it's a... Late bloomer. Yeah, I think so. I think it's that working class lad to a middle class environment that mm. I feel as if I have to do certain things now. Things like not swear at the dinner table, eat properly with a knife and fork, drink whiskey, appreciate wine, that kind of stuff, not punch other people whose political views don't match mine, those kind of things, you know, the little things. Two, oh, two things of that I, list I agree with, by the way. Oh. I like the wine and the whiskey part, not punching people in the face and the obscenity. Of said, I just don't know if I'm up that point, but I'm not as wise as you. Like, I'm still on my journey. That's why you're on that seat and I'm on this side. <laughs> Um, yeah, do you think maybe I, I'm, I'm interested in learning. I'm always with all of our guests. I'm always interested in learning who are the, the people or experiences that really shaped your vision 
Because like I know for me, I've had a bunch of mentors in my life that that kind of took me under their wing and said, "You're either getting it wrong. This is the right approach." Was was there a person or a, a experience for you that really caused a shift in how you approach? It's like this is really what I should be doing. I should be thinking differently. I should be, or it was it was really a gradual kind of progression. No, I, I don't. Th not not in cyber because there's not that many interesting people in cyber. I'll be quite honest with you. We're I've, met, I've noticed that. I've noticed that. We're all kind of dull. Um, <laughs> we try and describe our industry by one word, cyber, as if everybody should then go, mm. "Oh, cyber!" Ooh. People forget what cyber meant in the early '90s, right? In the early '90s. Cyber meant to have online relations with people, you know, virtual sex. <laughs> I was trying to remember that word the other No, I was remembering there the first time I was in a chat room and it happened, and I was like, what did we used to call that? What did we used to call that? I sided with them last night. I sided with her. And and the idea that we're now It was safe. It was safe. Exactly. It was but a the safer idea time. That we're now describing ourselves as a bunch of self-abusers. Just tickles me pink all the time to be quite honest. <laughs> Let's put it on the clock. Eleven minutes three seconds. Ian That's has right. both tickled me pink and then also brought back some childhood trauma. All yeah. in the same blow. It's yeah. amazing. That's just, yeah. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yeah, you gotta keep know. it rolling. Don't wanna know. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm, I'm giving you the next question because we don't want to break into my childhood. We want to understand why, why Ian thinks this way. That is actually though, an interesting point, though. Now that you think, I, you, thank you, thank you for reminding me. That's what we called it. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to say? About not, it? not that we uh, ever partook. Just no. out there. Not that we. It's like science. We're just trying to objectively understand. We're just anyway, talking. That we'll save those stories for another day. Um, no, but like you were saying, that the transformation of that word, and that's you know that's what we called it, and you know now it's just short for we say it's short for cybersecurity, and the security part's implied. Um, but you know, and you you talk about bringing it you know back to the people. So when you say you know cyber cybersecurity, you know you're you want to speak to the people and you want to help the people, and I feel like there is a big divide because a lot of people. Uh, think it's so removed from them because it's something, yeah, the guys with the big with all the letters after their names they, they yeah. take care of it and they don't have to do anything and like is your main goal to reach the absolute individual or like what is if you could if you could go to retire happy what would, what would you say you've done? Oh, a house in Barbados or something like that. If we're going to do proper Legit. happiness. Legit. Yeah, people, proper happiness. <laughs> when people say money won't make you happy, bullshit. Money will make me <laughs> ecstatic. Ecsta no, no. Um, you should talk to my ex-father-in-law. He's like, money won't make you happy, but see what happens when you don't got any. Yeah. yeah. So like, Lack yeah, of money will make you know, pretty unhappy. some insight right there. Yeah. <laughs> like, I will not pay my bills, but I hear that one. But, um... Uh, so, so I think what would make me retire happy? I, I think. Look, I, I, I do want to touch people, not in that way. I don't want to touch them in that way. Cybering, in, safe cybering. Not in, yeah, not in a wine steam. That's or, usually why you retire, not that what you're going to do because yeah. you retire. Yeah. But, but it, it, it does. When somebody who's never ever, um, uh, kind of, uh, never taken cyber or security on board like my dad. Right, I do this stuff because of the people like my dad who don't get it, who will click on links and then ask me afterwards why stuff has disappeared from his machine and things like that. And yeah. and after you had to build rebuild your parents' machine three or four times, I can tell you there's not enough therapists in the world that can help you with their browsing history, right? There just mm. isn't. It's there's mm. it's stu that stuff that never leads you. But um, but but it's it's reaching those people and not those people just as individuals outside of organizations, but those people within organizations who are so disinterested, so disinterested in the boring awareness training that they get year in, year out. Yeah, yeah. And the only the only requirement of that awareness training is not to educate people, it's to get a tick in a compliance box. That's the only requirement an organization does does it. If they truly cared about their people, they'd have more engaging content, they'd have funnier content, they'd have all different styles that mm -hmm. a whole that their, their whole audience, but they don't. 
they they drink the kool-aid of the vendor that says you must do this and there's the compliance box and bang and then they and then they wonder why their people really don't give a shit because you haven't you haven't touched them you haven't reached them you haven't engaged with them on an emotional level or you've used things like uh you've used badly constructed fishing sins that are there purely to trick people and cast them out i'm not about mm-hmm. fishing sins in general but when you use it as as a purely to trick people and catch them out you're breaking trust you 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 you're removing yourself further away from the people that we're supposed to help people in security i think get the wrong idea why they're there they're not there as some kind of superstar or or there is some kind of technical brilliant type person savant that knows everything they're there to help the people who don't get it they're there to help them they're not there to make them feel foolish or, yeah. or talk to them like like idiots or describe them as the weakest link or say they've got to be they've got to build a human firewall change human firewall term to human shield and see how that analogy works for people when you try and oh they don't them. like that no, they don't they like do. that at all Nobody yeah. comes to work to be another bit of technology. People come to work to earn enough money to pay the bills and go on holiday twice a year to forget the bloody work they're doing, to be quite yeah. honest. You know? so, so we need to be more empathetic and more compassionate. And that's what I hope. If, if I can get to the end of my career and people say to me, that, that, that's what you achieved. You were able to help people understand that it's not always all their, their fault. They have been tricked bad people do what bad people do and all that type of good stuff, then then I think I'll, I'll retire a happy man in a house on a beach in Bombay. Yeah. I didn't see you as the as the emotional, touchy-feely guy, but it seemed like there was a lot of sincerity in that approach that, you know, it's both respecting your audience, trying to approach them on their level and giving them something that's practical that gives them value. You're not speaking down to them. You're not giving this antagonistic kind of almost manipulative approach where you're trying to catch them in the wrong. You're trying to empower them and get them to to want to do this and more more importantly, to think about it personally and, and objectively instead of something where it's this boring directive or this really, you know, offensive kind of approach. Like when you were saying with the fishing thing, it, it really blows my mind that a company, when when they're trying to to see where their their company their employees are holding on their cybersecurity ability, they're going to manipulate them. They're going to set them up. They're going to kind of push them down. It's like you want to build them up, or you want to give them something where they can feel that there there's something that they're doing that's right. I would yes. think that on to to break them down, it would be very destructive, and to be able to give them the skills afterward, they'd almost feel like they're a failure. Or they they don't have the ability. Yeah, you're right. So, so I, I often say to people, look, when my parents taught me stuff about life, when they tried to raise my awareness about stuff, so, so when they tried to say to me, don't touch the stove, it gets hot as a kid, what they didn't do was take my finger and stick it on the top of the stove and burn the top of my finger just to teach me a lesson. Why is that good, though? Why the that, fuck is serial killers? That's good to hear. <laughs> it would be <laughs> they didn't do that, not that they did do it. But that's the same thing we're doing in fishing tests, right? We're mm-hmm. almost going, here's, here's, here's the hot stove. Or, 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 if, See, my mom would have told me a story about, you know, back in the 1800s, people's dresses used to catch fire and da 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 da. And she would have like gone into this whole thing, and I will never forget that story, you know? <laughs> and I think in a weird way, I think that's also an effective. <laughs> That's the way you reach people. So, so my parents didn't describe stranger danger to me by hiring a stranger to pick me up in a car and then screw the rest of my life up by by giving me some kind of weird hallucinations about what would happen to me. And then when they still got- love you, they still love you. This just that just costs money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly that. And, and then when <laughs> you get home, your mum's waiting for you to go. Now, did you spot the three things that you shouldn't have done in that? That's exactly what we do with fishing tests, you know. We, we trick people, we entice them, and then we go, did you see the three things that you should have spotted there? It's like, oh, piss off. Honestly, people need to need to realise they're dealing with other people just like them. And and actually, the more they do this type of stuff and the more they trust, it distances, it distances them away from those people that they're trying to protect. And and I think there's, a, there's still an arrogance and an ignorance and a certain type of attitude insecurity i hear the CISO 
on a call not so long ago described their people as wet sacks of meat. Now we know what C in CISO stands for, right? So, so I, I just don't get why people are so disparaging to other people like that. You know, oh, that's that's yeah. like how how, did, how would that person even pretend to convey information when whoever they see on the other side is a mindless sack of nothing that will never like it, it's it's ridiculous. And why on the other side, why would that person think that the CISO has any value when they know? They don't respect their basic worth, their ability, their, yeah. there's nothing, it's, it's trash. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, listen, we've, we've all been there and we all go through an evolution, you know, we, we all think everybody else is an idiot until, until the lightning bolt hit, hits us that we're all idiots, right? We're all, right. We're, we're all uh, apes who six million years ago happened to branch off from, from the other ape genus and, and became Homo erectus six million years later driving cars and making stupid mistakes you know so so we still all have that ability and we're all susceptible <laughs> to that and and i think sometimes because we think we know we can eat with a knife and fork and wear nice clothes that was still not the same as our ancestors and and anthropologically our genetic coding is predisposed to being idiotic you know so so we 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 can't i'm not sure we can ever train out the the ability to fall for scams and the ability for fall to to fall for somebody with a decent offer, um, because mm -hmm. actually we're built to trust, we're built to help, we're built to grow societies, mm -hmm. we're built to believe in myths like money and religion and all that type of stuff. Um, so so so, what what makes us think that we can actually remove that without getting into the genome and taking that specific part of the DNA out, right? Well, actually, it's quite apocalyptic, because if you think about it, I think you're very correct that, um, you know, we're built to have a certain level of stress. In fact, if you if you have zero trust in anything, that was not like meant to be a reference. But if you have no trust in anything, you you're getting through your day is almost impossible. You have to mm -hmm. trust that the elevator is not going to fall. You have to trust that, you know, all these little things you have to trust. And if you start. So that, to me, that's what's apocalyptic. If we have to like really be that suspicious of everything all the time, and I grew up in a non-digital age where we had less to be suspicious of, then it sounds like we could be really paralyzed. And on top of that, like all that is good about us, you know, that that's it. Yeah, I'm, you, I'm doomed. We're doomed. It, it's it's not focused <laughs> on that. We're halfway through. We're halfway through. This. No, we, we have at least 25 minutes left. We're not doomed, audience. So, <laughs> you, you, you are right. and, and I think we, we don't spend enough time celebrating the good things and the positive things, you know. I, I, I was always taught as a footballer, win or lose, we're on the booze, right? So, so and I know that's not, I, I know that's not for modern athletes, right? I understand that, but... The sentiment Maybe it's also still for modern athletes. But, but the sentiment <laughs> of, it, of it was, we win, we win or we lose as a team, and, mm -hmm. and we're together as a team, and that's what bands us together and, and things like that. And I think, I think when we start focusing on the positives that bring people together, rather than the negatives that pushes apart, mm -hmm. we've got half a chance. Then, right? You know, yeah. we've, we've got. Half a chance. Yes, there are bad people. Yes, there are hackers who do bad things. Yes, there are terrible people on the dark web and stuff. They've always been there. They've been there when we were hunter gatherers, robbing our nuts and berries. Totally. We, so. They just have better tools now. Exactly. So if we're yeah. if we're gonna go good bad here, maybe we'll start with the positive. I want to hear what do you think cyber marketers are getting right before we talk <laughs> about what they really need to super improve. I mean, once again, it's very easy to start on that side. But what do you think that they they are understanding that they are conveying correctly? And then on the other side, the next part. What are they missing? What do we need to, to be able to reassess? Because I think that we've had a lot of touch points here where it's mm -hmm. talking with sincerity, being able to give shareable information that's engaging, making it that people who don't have this technical background still want to be able to get with it and then can be able to bring that information. So what are, what are some things that, that you see that startup marketers are not failing at across the board? Uh, well, they're not failing at getting investment, right? So, mm. so the VC investment. <laughs> You know, I mean, there's there's big cyber security companies out there who've yet to turn a profit and are still spending VC money like it's water. You know, so and all that goes on marketing. You know, it really does go on marketing. And, and I think 
and, and, and having worked for back in the day, the biggest security company at the time, which was Symantec, we were no different back in the day, right? We needed the biggest standard infosec. We needed the, you know, all, all of that type of stuff. It was all an ego trip. And I think the things that good cyber marketers get right is sincerity, is authenticity of voice, is not selling with fear, uncertainty and doubt, but they are few and far between. I think mm -hmm. on the main and in the whole, a lot of people sell food and, and unfortunately we need to move away from that. Excuse They're touching me. on not fear. But, I was um, amazed that people don't say, that that you even would touch about that because it's such it's such a, a someone quality. Hit, 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 Sorry, someone knocked. Oh, somebody knocked. But anyway, even though Ian's gone, uh, I don't care. I, I think that it, it's such a quality quality touch point, and I you know I think we should go with it. What do y'all? Yo, what do you think? What I you actually think? like Fud. Oh, I'm you back. Do. You are. I, oh, it's so I, nice to re-see you, Ian. Thank you yeah, so much for rejoining yeah. us. Bye. Internet, Ian, Ian, internet. Nice to rejoin everybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, where were we before? We were rudely interrupted by somebody knocking on my front door. How dare I was, I was just saying while you were gone that I, I like FUD, but I was just trying to be controversial. But so, what I do like, what I do like is I think sometimes people need a story to understand something so yeah. if something that really happened or could happen and you explain it in that scenario there's it can be a thin line between being informative and mm. you know full-on flooding and to play, to play devil's advocate here <laughs> I, I really wonder with the fear factor because i know so many marketers and so many CISOs will say we're not going to get anybody to move the needle unless they realize what's at stake Unless I scare the, the crap out of them, they're not going to realize that this is a real problem. And and on my side, who's as somebody who's worked as a vendor, who's worked in PR, who's worked with all sorts of different cyber cybersecurity people across the across the spectrum, trying to balance that equation where people need to understand the threat, but then at the same point, if you don't empower them or give them a skill, you're just screaming fire in the movie theater. Yeah, I, I think uh, I mean. Fear, fear, fear was a big thing in the early days, right? In the late 90s, the early 2000s, kind of stretched through to 2010. But I still see it creeping in now. And 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 I think I, I, I think part of it is that um, people just don't jump on the bandwagon and don't think for themselves. And people are, people are really uh, uncomfortable with stepping outside of that box. Um, some of the great marketing I've seen outside of the industry just it's it's those people who are challenging those norms who are you know dollar shave club those guys paddy power mm -hmm. great great man and, you know he, he, even though paddy power's a gambling company and, and I, I have a problem with gambling and think i don't have a problem with gambling i want to say that by the way <laughs> fear of gambling right an <laughs> issue <laughs> not one of those issues um i just give my money to the bookmakers it's it's cuts out the middleman it's easier that way there you go um, <laughs> But, but but those guys get that kind of right and and smaller niche companies like um offended marketing here in in the uk they get it right as well because i think what they do is they play to the niche that is comfortable for them they know their voice they know their right. approach they know what they're going to say and how they're going to say it and actually they care not to jot what other people think that's an important bit about this not caring what other people think everybody's got an opinion the same as everybody <laughs> has an arsehole right we all have them not everybody wants to see or hear it though to be quite honest oh, but i hear they all stink i hear they all stink yeah, yeah. possibly, possibly. <laughs> i would not I want to speak about objective reality it's it's subjective opinion or objective reality i don't know so yeah so i i think um when 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 I see see the good ones, uh, and again few and far between. Well, one of the one of the adverts as a kid from television that sticks in my mind was a John West advert. Now John West sell tinned salmon and tuna and stuff like that, and they did an advert where a guy was fishing for salmon, and a bear ran up to to steal his salmon on and, uh, salmon off him, and then they had like a karate fight. I just thought that kind of stuff was pretty. Really and genius and brilliant. You can probably find it on on YouTube. Uh, you say bear karate, you've immediately touched a nerve in my heart. 
Like, I, I don't know if it's a universal thing, if we go across mm-hmm. regions and religions, but as soon as you said that, I immediately, I melted and I was like, I want the, I want to give them my money. I just yeah. want to give them my money. I don't care. Exactly. That. You know, and I think it's those things that, that stick in the mind. You, you know, I, I always ask people, tell me which teacher you remember at school. And they'll always say the funny one. They'll very rarely mm-hmm. say the one that beat them religiously right. on a daily basis. <laughs> in our school, right? So I know you can't do it now. I know you can't. Yeah, do it. it's frowned upon now. You should come to Israel. It's actually, in some places, it's actually not as frowned upon as you would think, which is okay. concerning, but apparently it happens. Hey, Internet. Hey, Internet. Um, I haven't heard of that, but okay. <laughs> you didn't have to move. You didn't have to move. Um, okay. Beating kids, by the way. I'm not advocating that. Only in self Ian Murphy, not into beating children. Internet, or let's just be does clear. Not have a gambling problem. No, neither again. So definitely not into beating children. I, I don't want, Cyfluencer can't attest to, to Ian's gambling issues because those are fluid. But we can say that we're pretty sure he doesn't hit kids. Yeah, oh, only in self-defense, to be quite honest. They deserved it as well. But that, but, but they, they deserved it, but he didn't do it. Like, once again. Indeed. Uh, we're, 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 I mean, it's amazing that we've gone off track again, to be quite honest. It's, it's almost like my comedy routines. I'll go off track <laughs> and I'll kind of come back eventually and get there, so... Um, we, we, we kind of come back to the point cyber marketing yeah. and good and bad I think it's right. about voice authenticity and comedy and, and I think the comedy is the important bit mm-hmm. and actually it comes back and answers one of your earlier questions that I don't think I answered about influencers, I don't think there's anybody in my career who's influenced me in that way but outside of my career people are played with people are played for as a footballer and also comedy giants like Billy Connolly and Robin Williams and in the UK, Morecambe and Wise and Tommy Cooper, they and and the Monty Python team as well. They all formed my humour as a kid growing up in Liverpool in the eighties, which which was a tough time to grow up, um, but a wonderful time. I, I don't look back on my childhood and think what a terrible time that was. It was brilliant. We had nothing, and it was great, and we were playing football all the time and laughing all the time, and it was brilliant. And it was that kind of stuff that got you through it, you know. And it comes to your point as well, yeah, of, of mentioning stories. Life is better with stories. Billy Connolly is a storyteller. Right. I could sit and listen to him for hours. He doesn't tell jokes. He tells stories, stories. and makes them funny. You know, right, right. it's a difference. Um, you know, and, and, and I think that's important. No, no I, you know, in a, in a way I was thinking of, um, you know, your videos. We have, I don't know if you guys do this. In the States, they have this kind of ridiculous thing. You get a speeding ticket. And you can kind of get points waived if you go to a little driving class. And a really popular way of doing it is comedy driving school. And, you know, they have, you know, you eat an enchilada dinner and some guy makes you laugh for six hours. And ideally, you learn more that way because, like you said, it's what you remember. You remember the whole story and the jokes and, the you know, the experience is completely different than, like, watching a video for six hours, which I've also done. (laughs) There was even a study... There was even a study that came out the other day about people with the autism spectrum disorder and like how can you get them to be able to better internalize information and there was this idea maybe we're going to grill them and give this repetitive but it's you give these short bursts of informative information and the, the something that, that really guides them and all of a sudden the entire action and the and the thought process changes so maybe that's something that's reflected for the broader population that you need something that's engaging that that skill building that you can really take in the short burst and then apply it i i agree i i always advocate for little and often um mm-hmm. uh, in in most things in life you know whether it's food whether it's comedy whether it's your sex life little and often that's all we need that's all we wow. need Wow, that's that's a very interesting way of approaching Insightful. that specific thing. <laughs> I would have said little and often related to different things, but Ian Murphy is a very revolutionary thinker. Food and sex, most people would be like not really and often. No, but that's what's good. It's like your your videos, they're nuggets, you know, they're like exactly. each one's a little tidbit and with one point something to think about. Yeah. Uh, you know, things like you and fishnets, hard to forget. Hard to forget, you know. <laughs> And also as well, putting the posters up around your room is slightly stalkerish as well. A little bit, a little bit. Can, can I ask you about your creative process a little bit, Ian? Mm-hmm. Like 
there, there's this entire spectrum of social references and, and media and movies and all these things. What what do you say where I'm going to pick a Monty Python thing? I'm going to pick the Terminator. I'm going to how what draws you to these concepts and what makes you think that they're going to really build this kind of engagement? Because it's it's a it's a crapshoot, right? Uh, it's uh, no, normally lager. So it's copious amounts of lager. Um, mm. The odd tequila shot thrown in. Um, and, and actually having a really talented team but behind me, you know, having a <laughs> Having a creative in that team. order, in that order, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. I mean, you know, I'm not a monster. I'm not doing tequila first and then lager second. You know, there's mm, and then appreciating your team third. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. No, but having having a creative <laughs> team is important. You know, those those guys set out to rob me of my dignity. When they mm. realise I've got none left, then uh, then then it is about. Hey, what about this? Hey, what about that? Or oh, I'd love to do something on that. Uh, and you had something to start with. I just, I'm just trying to understand your creative team. They thought you had dignity to begin with, and then they evolved from there. Interesting, yeah. interesting hiring choice. I mean, it's taken them a couple of years to strip the last mm. element of my dignity and career away from me, but but they've got there eventually. You know, they've, they've mm -hmm. pushed on through. The 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 troopers, they really are. But but I think um, part of that process is. Is also not stifling creativity, you know. Um, th there's been certain times, certain suggestions that I've made, and the team's gone, "Yeah, oh, we'll give it a try." We don't think we'll, it'll work, and and it hasn't. But we'll give it a try. There'll be certain yeah. things that they've suggested where I'm like, "I don't think that'll work," and we've done it, and it's gone gangbusters. So, so you can mm -hmm. never, you can never ever try, but you shouldn't stifle it, you know. I mean, it, everybody says there's no stupid answers. Uh, sorry, no stupid questions. Of course, there's stupid questions. There's loads of stupid questions. Um, <laughs> but, no four-year-old ask a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> but, but there's no no stupid creative ideas. To be quite honest, you know, I, I'll say to them, I, I I I'd love to do a Monty by Python Life of Brian type sketch, or they'd say to me, I'd love to do an Indian scene. Type. The, the Life of Brian one, the entire Israeli audience, as soon as I saw that, I was like, we're all into that, and it doesn't matter what Ian sells, we're all into that now. We're all completely into that. <laughs> I, I can still remember the whole film from start to finish. That's another thing, right? You know, I think as I get older, my memory fails me and stuff like that, but I can still remember most of the lines from The Life of Brian and things like that. Comedy mm -hmm. stick, it really mm -hmm. does stick with you. You know, and, and, and I think people are afraid to use it because of the offense nature now, because because people are so mm. offended of, at anything, at anything. It doesn't matter what you say. Oh, I'm offended at that. Like, so what? What do you want me to do about it? It's like, I mean, that's you, the next question where it's, yeah. it's balancing how to get yeah. people interested and how to have something where people want to share it and it's it's worthwhile to have in the conversation, but then not trying to offend people too much with the political sensitivities that you're going to step on these toes. Because I see that for, for you, I think it's fascinating where it's like you still are cheeky enough where you can get that idea across and you're not so overly concerned with, you know, making somebody feel that we need to accommodate everything that you can't appreciate. This is ridiculous. This is so, intending like, in to be truth, humor. Yeah. How many times have somebody commented, you know, this is 2022, do better? Has that happened? Oh, <laughs> I love that do better part. Oh, <laughs> do better. Just do better, not 2022. Do better. Just do better. Um, <laughs> about six or seven times, I think. And I think I've probably done over 200 posts, maybe uh, in their entirety. I've probably had several mil million views. And uh, thousands of likes and comments. So okay, so you're doing all right. Different. Yeah, I, I, I actually maybe maybe it's because when I do get that type of thing, they've normally misread the context of it. So I try to <laughs> them on the context of what I was talking about, and when they then don't get it and they then start being rude to me, I'm like, well, I'm six foot four and I'm a working class lad from Liverpool, I'll turn up at your door. I don't really care, to be quite honest. <laughs> so, is this so where everybody realised that John Lennon wasn't as nice as you thought? John Lennon wasn't <laughs> as nice. So, so um, <laughs> a, a family friend of mine is uh, played with uh, Jerry and the Pacemakers. So Jerry oh, and the wow. Beatles yeah, for sure. went round together in the very early days, and he's, he's told me stories of, 
Lennon Jordan back in the day. That was like, yeah, he wasn't a nice. I'm, I'm so glad he's dead because I assume that all the Me Too. This is I, I, as a pause. I'm really glad that he's dead because I assume that Me Too would have completely and totally killed everything. Because you're not allowed to hit women, even if you wrote Imagine. This just in, even if you wrote Imagine, hey, best friends with Paul McCartney still can't hit women. So. <laughs> He was, um, as as probably most people were, he, he, it wasn't anything terrible, but he, when he had a drink in him, he, he became a bit more aggressive, kind of thing, you know. Whereas when I, and he never had a drink in him, right? Yeah, but, but, but when I had a drink in him, I just want to get up on the karaoke to be quite honest. Yeah, yeah. It's that's, you know, <laughs> if only other people were so self aware, you know. That, me, me and Frank Sinatra are like that. <laughs> That's a separate. That's a separate bag of worms. I'm not sure if you want to open up that one specifically, but okay. Should we do yeah. a LinkedIn live karaoke down the road. I think we should. Yeah, yeah, we could do. Yeah, yeah. Great, actually. Uh, I'm See, this is the creative things, right? juices, like you said. Like it's a creative process. You just start throwing stuff out. You know, we should mm -hmm. try it. We should. We should certainly not not try it. You know. Yeah, for sure. Um, can I can I ask a question about this? Is something as like a, as a writer, as somebody who's always trying to communicate. Was there a point in your journey where you felt like you understood your voice? Where you really, you understood this, where like, this is who I am in my own skin. I get how I communicate. I understand, you know, how, how I rub people this way or that way. And I'm comfortable with it. Because I think that a lot of marketers, a lot of people who are trying to develop their voice, they're trying to figure out, am I trying to accommodate this? Am I trying to speak to that? Or do I have sincerity in my own voice, in my own communication, my own approach, where I can speak for myself? Um, no, is the easy answer. I'm really uncomfortable. I'm really uncomfortable watching myself. <laughs> really uncomfortable listening to myself. Uh, now, I, now that I do stand up and I do corporate gigs with stand up, it doesn't matter how many people come up to me afterwards and say that was brilliant. It was really funny. That was really great. I'm like, yeah, you're only saying that to be nice. It must be something of the of the working class lad in me that doesn't take praise very well. Um, mm. but also wants praise. It's weird. So. So you just captured my childhood. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's almost like you want that, but you don't. You can't handle it when it comes your way. Um, for future and, guests, we'll we'll charge for therapy sessions. We'll do it off air if you'd like as well. <laughs> but but yeah, it's 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 weird because um I, I think I know what I'm okay at, um but I also think but I also watch other people. I go, oh, they're brilliant. And yet other people have that view of me because they tell me that's not me being egotistical. Other people tell me that and I'm like, yeah, you're just being nice. So I can't take that thing in mm -hmm. that they're telling me. Um, and, and actually the comedy and the stand-up bit is an evolution for me because it's something I've always wanted to do but never been brave enough um, because I think I'm slightly, I'm, I think I'm an introverted extrovert. Mm. Where a, a couple of times I'll be on the karaoke, no problem. In the company of my friends, I'll hold court and I'll chat to them and all that type of stuff. In a room full of different people I don't know, where I've got to mm. network, I'm a wallflower. I really you all sound it. familiar. It's I. It's what I call the swashbuckling <laughs> introvert. And, yeah. then, and then I'm like, like, I'm exactly the same. And then suddenly people are like, you're not introverted. People know. Yeah. That. I, I have the reverse. I have the reverse agoraphobia. I, have, I would like to be introverted. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I have reverse agoraphobia. I love closed spaces with loud noises and tons of people and a million things going on. But that's a separate disorder. We're working on that. Medication. There's medication. Yeah. yeah. Do what happens when you get a kid like that? It's a problem. Let me tell you about it. <laughs> um, I've been, I've always 20 at university now so those problems have gone away well oh, do you want to hang out with my six-year-old okay <laughs> um so may, may i have uh, th this is kind of where i get into the inside the actor studio section uh, <laughs> of these casual conversations as somebody you know on my end you know, who's always trying to learn more about cyber, trying to be able to connect more, trying to be able to make it more relevant. Can you tell us maybe what are your favorite cyber focused books and movies and podcasts, something where you're thinking more creatively and it really it connects to you instead of like we all hear this technical backlash. But I'd love to hear where it's like, that's cool. That's something I connect with. Yeah. Uh, my favorite cyber book of all time is The Cuckoo's Egg. I think that every, should be everybody's favorite. It should be required reading for getting into this industry, you know. 
it is as true today as it was back in the 80s when it happened. The, the, the way the attack happened, the way they got in, the way they moved around, the way it was spotted by by an admin error on the on the accounting system on the on the uh, uh, the mainframe that that was in the university at the time. It's just a wonderful, wonderful story. Um, I, I, a book. I also think cyber can be found outside of cyber. So I love books like Sapiens, anything by by Yoa. Um, uh, um, your yeah. pronunciation's fine. Don't worry about it. Throw it down. Naval Harari. Anything by, by <laughs> uh, Akins, Homo Deus, and that type of stuff. Just wonderful stuff. Um, the Confidence Game by Maria Konnikova. Wonderful, wonderful book. Um, never split the difference. The author's mind's gone out. The author's name's gone out of my mind, but it's it's about negotiation and and how not to how not to split the difference. And then anything by Malcolm Gladwell, I think, is all inspired and, and makes you think and any book that makes you think is is really good um, those are controversial I, words at the end there <laughs> that's it's interesting with the malcolm gladwell because i i love malcolm gladwell and i always get like really excited but then i go into the stats and i was like man those seem like a little bit fudge but it's yeah, it's yeah. super compelling oh it, it is it, i think his latest book talk, um talking to strangers or something like that introduced mm -hmm. concepts like coupling and things like that where certain things won't happen if other things aren't there so mm -hmm. like um home suicides back in the 60s and that was largely to do with the type of gas they supplied to the house and take that away never happened again type of thing you know so all of that stuff really makes me think about the cyber mm -hmm. realm there's certain mm -hmm. things happen in cyber because the people click links because of this and can technology do something better with it you know and mm -hmm. so i always yeah, you read that. tipping points too it's just like wow it's so compelling it's so interesting it gets you so yeah. motivated yeah, yeah yeah so so those those are the things in terms of movies and that um i watched something just recently in the uk called the undeclared war it was on channel four you probably get it on on uh youtube or stuff like that i would imagine mm -hmm. um and, and it was about it, it was two years in the future it was about the the russians attacking the british uh election system and stuff like that uh, and I, I just, uh, I, I think all of that stuff fails to impress me because, um, I, I, again, I think they try and take a complex issue and distill it down to basic stuff and try and try and uh, explain it to people. But they don't do it fully. They don't do it mm. well. They don't. Um, they try and make a drama out of it to make it compelling. And yet, I find myself watching it going that's not realistic that's not realistic that one thing in do, do, do you know the one thing that will make it more realistic in a movie whenever you see a hacker or somebody trying to stop a hacker on the keyboard and they're typing away furiously typing what i want to happen just once just once and i'll go that's realistic it's halfway through they go oh shit i type that incorrectly and start hitting the backspace, backspace, backspace. <laughs> that's true actually <laughs> they go off their, their black hood yeah and like this is not working. Just in case everyone was wondering, this is not working. I need like or the, a monster. Or the window and like... starts doing an update right in the middle now. <laughs> <laughs> shit, I meant to type grep and I've typed grop. Oh, shit, I need to go back and, you know, it's not. The Russians are going to kill me now. <laughs> so so I, I, I don't think, um, I, I'm happy that in movies, cyber is this otherworldly stuff and things like that, you know, that. Uh, I, I'm not sure I want it to be as real as people want to make it because it's so boring. It's really boring if you you're more of an enemy of the state versus what's really going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, exactly that. See, give me a bit of suspense. Cut it down a little bit. You know, if if I'm trying to depict how I'm tracking down an attacker over a period of time, uh, it's it's just going to be dull, right? So. Show me them doing it in a millisecond and things like that, and make it be make it be a, a bit more out there. I'm happy with Mission Impossible. I'm happy with James Bond. I'm happy with all the Bond stuff and that. Don't cloud it with any kind of realism, you know. So, mm -hmm. um, as as for podcasts, um, I, I very rarely listen to to uh, men. The, the, there's a couple of good ones, possibly not cyber related. The, the Infinite Monkey Cage by Brian Cox is just a wonderful one about science and that. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and then and then there's a there's another great podcast by 
a chap called Emmanuel Sanubi, who's a comedian in the UK, and another chap called Ian Murphy, who's another potential comedian in the UK. Wait, wait, wait one, one more time. Who is that last guy? And, and you're you're objectively into him. You're yeah. objectively into him. Yeah. Potentially, this new comedian called Ian Murphy, a very good-looking guy. I'm told. I'm told. Mm. Um, a bit George Clooney esque. A bit George Clooney esque. Um, so misunderstood by some, but and, but really could be paid more. Yes. Slight strange, but yeah. So <laughs> we, we can bring comedy um, to to the podcast within the cyber and IT world and try and make light of situations. So it's called TLC Unfiltered. Um, and it's it's essentially us with really interesting guests just trying to make stupid knob gags, to be quite honest. Essentially, mm. that's what it is. And, and I think we do it really well. We're really good at it. Um, but the guests are awesome. They're just, like, really interesting people. And, and, and you know when it's interesting, when the co-hosts are sat there on the screen like that, looking at them going... I don't know what to say next because I'm just so enthralled with what you're saying at the moment. Completely and totally prepared, but enthralled. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so they they they're kind of my picks, um, and and I like some of the comedy podcasts as well that are out there. There's there's another one I like called Leggy. It's by it's it's by a chap called Andy Grant, who's who's another fellow scouser. If you're from Liverpool, you call the scouser. Who's another fellow scouser. Um, uh, and and it, that that's interesting. And then another one, just to complete the Scouse Union, by a comedian called Adam Rowe called Have a Word. That's a really good one as well. Um, so it's I, I think uh, I I try not to. Uh, I've been in cyber long enough. I try not to surround myself with cyber and cyber people because I've found mm. out after years of being in cyber, I'm not really cyber people. I'm, I'm yeah, really and they don't bathe. They don't bathe. Like what's with that, right? <laughs> or, or, or deny that to be quite honest you can't say that you can't deny that i didn't just say that a second ago um so ian where can we find more about you where can we find your material on the internet find out a bit, little bit more about cyber off and and also you know what should we be thinking moving forward as cyber marketers what's that one lesson that we should learn from this conversation um don't don't use food I, I, I would I would urge everybody not not to use food and and to kind of find a, a a funnier way of putting stuff across. Be a bit more human to people. You'd be you'll be amazed how how that reacts and how that plays with people. Um, uh, as as for where you can find me, um, uh, Ian Murphy on LinkedIn, um, Cyber Off UK on Twitter, Ian J Murphy Four on Instagram. Uh, if you Google you Ian Murphy Cyber tends to come up. You're a great artist, by the way. If you are Ian Murphy artist, beautiful work. But Ian Murphy Cyber also comes up for you a couple. Of times yeah, around. it is. If if you search for Ian Murphy, you'll get the artist. I think I'm on page three or something like that. And I didn't know there was <laughs> Ian Murphy's. You can't all be a hoot of sunshine, but if that means anything, the tax collectors also know where to go. Exactly, and also as well, if you are searching, just remember there's no reason to go beyond page one on Google. Right, just no reason at all because we're not yeah. monsters. Two types of people go beyond page one: terrorists and pedophiles. Nobody else needs to go beyond page one of Google, right? Fifty-three That's minutes in, Ian Murphy tells us how he really feels. Is this he where just I called me I, a I, terrorist I, and a pedophile? Exactly. <laughs> I didn't even know because I, I was going to check. Really avid researcher, but apparently right? I was going to transition <laughs> out, but I'm concerned we need more banter because I don't want to frame Ian as a pedophile page two Googler. Um, anyway, <laughs> the world is still fine. Ian is not a bad guy. Yael is not horrified. Mm. Yehuda is okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> On the, uh, the, the website is cyberoff.co.uk. It will soon be moving to cyberoff.com, so I've managed to buy the .com domain. I'll be switching their own. Mm. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, Big yeah. stuff, well, Big stuff. Yeah. So, Ian, thank you so much for, for coming on, for letting us pick your brain. Uh, everybody should definitely follow his content. It's really, you know, it, I don't want to say game changing because it's so completely and totally overused, but it's such a refreshing way to approach cyber content, and everybody should definitely check it out. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day, evening, afternoon, and um, bye, everybody. See you, Internet. Thanks, Woo!